Good morning, fans, Privateer FX. Coming at you on the Thursday after the Wednesday, in which we had a bunch of Fed speakers. The most hawkish seemed to be um, not from the from the ECB, um, but. Who knows? They're all trying to be hawkish, but the market doesn't really want to want to believe them. Check out the tens. Hawk, 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 up to three six nine. Bang! Right down to three sixty. Um, don't understand this. You know, happened late in New York and then dribbled down lower in Asia. This is the chart of the yield. Um, I don't know. Maybe the market's long. Or maybe the market's short 10-year treasuries. I don't know. I don't understand this at all. This thing should be at 380. Um, but we're quite cautious when we don't understand something, when something surprises us and looks a bit wonky. Um, we step back and just take another breath and, and take another look. So we we pulled our offers in 10s, even though we've been trying to sell all week. Um this just looks a bit weird, so keep your eye on this. And if this does continue lower, this is stocks higher, this is Aussie higher, Euro higher, um, this is dollar yen back lower. Uh, if this thing, I, th I would say if this thing settles anywhere down below 360 today, um, you're going to see some selling pressure on the dollar. Let's look at Aussie first. Pretty standard. Very nice setup yesterday on this this turn bar here in the European Open. Made the new high. Uh, you know, nice tail. Rejection. Uh, short Aussie yesterday paid. We were riding that a little bit. Not riding, not riding dirty, but, uh, you know, we had a little bit of Aussie on that worked out. But today it looks like Aussie can go higher. Uh, so now we're long Aussie just because of this yield situation. It just it's a little bit weird. Um, we bought 53s here early doors, and we're just looking to sort of caress Aussie long side. It looks like stocks are going to open higher, um, and see how, we'll see what happens there. Euro, you could argue, you could do the same with Euro. Euro is just a little bit more stalwart than Aussie. Aussie's a lot more flimsy, so it just Bops around a little bit. It's sort of a first mover. Um, you could probably say the same thing with Euro. Can you collect some Euros here between 20 and 30 uh, for the Open today? Probably. Dollar Yen had this move up to 86. I mean, we were we were sitting long Dollar Yen, waiting for this 50 level to break all fucking day yesterday. Just just didn't really didn't really want to. Then at 2 a.m. it finally finally popped its cherry uh, up to 86 but then right back down that's that's a, what's a worrying sign for dollar yen bulls that that bar right there this should this should have been closed at the highs and now 13150 acts as a platform and we're off to 138 because US terminal rates going to be five and a quarter five and a half carry trade is back on uh, but no that is not happening. Not a lot is happening, to be fair, 131.46, but a bit puzzling, a bit puzzling, this dollar-yen. Makes me think that um, maybe there's some, some left-hand side action. Maybe they're going to go hunt out some of these recent dollar-yen long, some of these conviction dollar, dollar uh, bulls, which, uh, you know, it's... There's a lot of arguments to be a dollar bull, but there's also a lot of arguments that um, the U.S. is fucked. And are those arguments sort of seeping into the conversation? You heard the Powell talk about the debt ceiling. There's obviously $31 trillion worth of debt, so there's interest rate expenses that are fucking the budget. Um, the only way you get out of this kind of thing is devaluing uh, your currency. And you saw Buffett make this move, I think in 2003, 2004, he bought a bunch of uh, dollar puts, uh, weapons of mass destruction, be what they may. Um, and his 
thesis, it's the first, only time I've ever seen him fuck around in FX. His thesis was basically like the debt's out of hand. Um, they're going to have to devalue. And of course they did. Uh, that was when, that was cable on its way to two. That was euro dollar on its way to one, 160. Uh, I don't want to pull up the monthlies now and look at that, but you can do it yourself. Uh, I'm not saying that's happening right now, but I'm just saying this is not as straightforward as higher rates, higher dollar, lower rates, lower dollar. In fact, if you were to write down on a piece of paper, whether you should be long or short dollars, the short side of the dollar uh, paper is just a little bit longer. There's maybe six reasons to be long, but there's probably eight reasons to be short. And our job is just to figure out what the flock, what's on the frontal lobe of the flock. It doesn't have to be correct. You just have to figure out what everybody's thinking um, and whether they have, whether it's too crowded or not. Anyway, speaking of crowded, uh, look at this Euro Swiss. This shit is crowded. Second most held retail position, long Euro Swiss. That's a, never a good sign. Um, three big down days through the 200 day. Yesterday just couldn't get out of its own way. I mean, come on. Come on, Jimmy. What, what are you doing? This makes absolutely no sense to me. Um, but just now I'm just it's trading like this is a very crowded trade there's just too many longs in the boat and the boat is sinking is this going to travel down to 98.16 the, the, the recent sort of last three months range lows maybe the reason I'm pointing it out is there's really no evidence yet um, to, to get long Euro Swiss even though it's come down from one, 101 down to 98.70 um, Crowded. Crowded House. I believe that's a good band. I'm not really a music guy. Um, Dollar Swiss, you could say the same thing. It's just a little bit crowded. 92.90 is your big medium-term pivot. Just stay away from Swiss francs these days. It's it's trading it's trading a bit wonky. Euro Norway, if you got short yesterday, it kind of paid, right? It went down to uh, 111. You got sort of three-quarters of a percent if you harvested um, crude's at 78.50, so this still should have some downward pressure. Um, short Euro Norway in a very patient, methodical manner uh, makes sense to us. Euro Sterling, I'm going to bring this up today because there should be some good support here at 88.50. So you can probably scoop up some Euro Sterling if we dribble down to 88.50 for a move back to 89.50. Um, the story in the UK is, is worse than Europe, so this is probably a good place to buy. 88.50, excuse me. Finally, dollars are. Um, is this turning? With rates where they are, if stocks go higher, this is a little stretchy up here. See, it's right up here at 2.5 Sigma. 2.5 Sigma is 17.75. You've been through this level, through these, this stretch for three days. I hate to sell dollars R, um, and so I'm not going to, but this looks like it might want to turn dollars R lower today. Let me just pop into Ethereum. Uh, for those of you who use Revolut, Revolut is starting staking with your Ethereum today, which, which we like. Um, we own Ethereum, obviously, uh, and because we're a boomer and we don't have a hard wallet and we don't want to engage in all of this um, wallet on the phone, we hold our crypto uh, at Revolut, and we get to stake today. Yay! Uh, anyway, crypto is just hanging around, not doing much. Uh, Shanghai Fork's coming up, for those of you who don't know what that is, uh, do some reading. Looks like uh, the market's maybe caught a little short Ethereum heading into the old uh, Shanghai. Maybe they're a little bit shanghai Oh yeah, buy some gold today. Gold looks uh, like it's ready to go. I don't know what the level is, but I uh, feel like we're going we're gonna to inch higher in gold today. Plenty of room uh, above the recent highs, 87, all the way up to 08, the big 
waterfall uh, move down. Uh, gold can probably get some legs if this rate situation hangs around um, 360. Anyway, long bit Aussie, uh, looking at this gold. If you want to sell dollars R, go ahead. I'm not doing it. Uh, but keeping a real close eye on this 10-year uh, note. Why is it here? Trying to figure this out. Um, maybe it's positioning. Maybe it's one of these sneaky, you know, disinflationary bullshit things. Who knows? Anyway, I'm babbling now. Bye, 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 bye.